introduce yourself first. Uh, hi, I'm Jared. I'm Seth. Uh, today we're going to be doing some do-it-yourself gas masks. Um, they should be essentially effective against mace and some riot control substances, such as tear gas. Uh, there's going to be two options for doing We have a $50 option in that range and one that was essentially free, a few dollars. Uh, the first option, the better option we're going to be looking at is going to involve a all-in-one full face mask, snorkel face mask. Um, you're going to need that. You're going to need carbon, like what you find in a filter for a fish tank, and cotton balls. Your second cheaper option is going to need a empty two liter bottle, preferably clear. Um, My bad. And in this case, we're using an old pair of boxers. I washed them. But you could probably use just about any cloth. Basically. Like cut up t shirt, whatever you have handy. Right. Yeah, so the uh, gas mask part of this. Uh, most of the substances that are used for riot control are not actually gases. Uh, gas is a particular phase of matter where the molecules are fully disassociated from each other. What we're going to be considering are aerosols. They're going to be small liquid or solid uh, particulates that are suspended in a gas. The fact that they're particulates instead of actually just gaseous molecules means that they can be filtered out. For something that's actually a gas, filtration is a lot more difficult and not usually used. Uh, generally, you'll have some kind of active filter element that chemically bonds to a gaseous substance. But since these are particles, uh, layers of cloth, layers of paper can help filter them out. Um, this is our extremely low-tech budget version of it. Several layers of cloth. Now, this is not going to be terribly effective. It's going to be better than getting blasted straight in the face with pepper spray. I hope, since I'm going to be having that done. But uh, I don't anticipate that it's going to be a long-term solution. I don't think you're going to be able to take a hit with pepper spray or mace and continue to stay in the environment. I think this is going to be a, I took that, I didn't drop straight to the ground, now I'm going to get out and get this thing off my face. This one should last longer, should give you a better potential outcome, less effects. Neither of these should you expect is guaranteed to prevent any of the effects whatsoever. Uh, I have been exposed to uh, CS gas, the chemical that's used in a lot of uh, tear gas, riot gas, and uh, mace. And even with the proper protective gear, it's not a fun experience. Uh, both of these substances, pepper spray, which is derived from capsaicin, the hot chemical in peppers, and the CS or CN substances in the riot control stuff, will soak into your pores, your mucous membranes, and it will hurt. But this should help prevent the temporary blinding and the severe side of the respiratory effects. All right, let's uh, tear into these and see what we can figure out. Okay, so first we're going to disassemble the snorkel portion. On the mask, normally this would insert right here and be up above your head. We don't actually care about this piece since we're not intending to use it as a snorkel, but I know, it looks kind of neat. Maybe I'll get into snorkeling someday and keep it around for that. The little pop tabs come off and this comes out. These are little check valves, so if you go underwater, they'll seal it off and you won't inhale water. We don't care about that. So, what we do care about are our cotton balls and the activated charcoal. So, the activated charcoal or activated carbon uh, actually does make this slightly effective at denaturing the substances themselves. But we're still primarily concerned about it as a filter. So, I'm going to stuff couple of cotton balls down in here because I want them to be able to hold the carbon. Okay. And then I'm going to disassemble the fish tank filter and try not to spill too much 
of the carbon. So this is what's coming out of there, just little chunks of charcoal basically. And I'm gonna pour it down in here as carefully as I can, which is not very. Another thing is these aren't intended to be specific guides. This is how you create this. These are meant to show more of a proof of concept that it can be done with simple over-the-counter things. Or below the belt things. I should stop trying to be funny, shouldn't I? All right, not perfect, it'll do. Okay, and then the top here, spread these out a little bit more, and try and stuff them in. You don't want them too compacted, or you won't be able to breathe through them, which doesn't do you a whole lot of good. Okay, let's see if I can still breathe through it. Eh, it's a little tighter than I'm happy with. So, just coarse. Loosen up the cotton a little bit. Now, I wouldn't use cotton balls alone because if you have them loose enough that you can breathe through them you probably have a lot of air channels in them just from the way that they're strung together a little better i think i've tightened the bottom And again, I will be testing all this at the end, which I'm not terribly excited about. I am confident in this version. Um, this one will just plain work against getting maced. It's a full face waterproof mask. Um, and I don't have much of a way to test its uh, resilience to the actual like full on dispersed aerosol riot gases, but the principle is sound. <laughs> okay, well, I knew this wasn't going to go perfect, Seth did too, but I can breathe through that one, not packed too tight. <coughs> Continuing on. Ah. <laughs> we said quick and cheap, right? Not quick and easy. Yeah. I'm glad. <laughs> Sorry about your workbench. Oh, that was, that was unpleasant. Not the best, but I can breathe in it. A little more air flow restriction than, uh, than the normal gas mask, but not too much. The obvious sucking back against my face is because it's not as structurally sound as the, the military grade gas mask was. I can breathe in it. If I hadn't packed the cotton balls too tightly, then I'd feel comfortable running in this. And that can be adjusted. 
but uh, we'll see how this goes. Okay. Maybe I'm gonna go crazy and have you actually spray some mace in the snorkel. Pepper spray. All right. Yeah, not my favorite solution, but uh, but it works. Yeah, I think it takes some trial and error to get the uh, the combos right. But like I say, this is just kind of a uh, proof of concept. This can be done, and then uh, can be done with making a great deal of mess and inhaling. Fish filter. <laughs> okay. This is the one I have very low confidence in. Um, I mean, it'll work. By some definitions. Basically, I'm going to cut a hole in this and strap it to my face and then stuff it with underwear. And then get mixed. Oh. This is an emergency, last-ditch effort kind of thing. I'll hold it up so we can see what we're looking at here. This is not by any means military grade. We recommended that anyone necessarily rely on it. Okay. Oh boy. I'm going to stuff this thing with underwear and then I'm going to rip the elastic band off the underwear and strap it to my head with the bands. Or maybe suction will hold it there. Boy. Oh boy. I inhaled too much carbon. I'm uncomfortable. This was my idea. You can keep that knife when you're done with it. I washed them. I washed them. thing uh, when you put a uh, when you put a gas mask on in a contaminated environment you need to clear and then seal the gas clear and then seal the mask so I put it to my face that clears it and then I cover the air inlet and suck in and that seals it now of course this is a super low tech version of all this but good for practice and then just wrap it to my head with underwear elastic band Super low tech version of the mask. Uh, yeah, still a, little rough to, still a little rough to breathe through. 
Um, the other thing is this one is not going to seal as well and keep it from seeping out. And as you can see, I cut too big a hole in the back. That's something you want to have to watch out for. That's going to drizzle down into my eye. Ah, shit. That's going to drizzle down into my eye. All right. Well, um, whew. yeah, this is a, uh, a very short term measure. This will protect you from the immediate disabling effects, the respiratory effects of the gas. And if you cut it to size properly, it will give you some protection against the, uh, the chemical getting in your eyes. But uh, don't try and withstand anything long term with this. Just uh, if you get hit, consider the mask compromised. Get yourself out of the immediate contaminated environment and get the mask off. And uh, oh, maybe go a size bigger in the underwear because that was going to be tight. Alright, so um, as long as you're aware, you don't have to go with exactly what we did here. Um, these, this is just one example. It can be a combination of you know the charcoal and your cotton balls. It can be paper, compressed paper. It can be different types of cloth. Um, as long as you have something that's going to catch uh, whatever is coming through your mask or you're inhaling, catch particles. Um, you can try different things, experiment, see what works for you. Uh, this is just one idea. Okay, so uh, first I did a little bit of reconfiguration on the packing density of the cotton in here. Uh, makes it a little easier to breathe. Um, like I said, this is just kind of general proof of concept. There's uh, a lot of variability in this. You can definitely put in more charcoal. Honestly, I didn't realize how little was in that filter. Um, and, you know, there's some testing to make sure you can still breathe through it and that you don't accidentally inhale it. I don't know what that's all about. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, uh, the charcoal should um, bind with and denature some of the gaseous particles, or, well, aerosolized particles. So, right now, we're going to do a bit of a test run. So I have no doubt that either of these, you can just blast me in the face with pepper spray and it's not gonna do anything. It's a plastic shield over my face. It's going to protect my eyes and nose and mouth. Um, I'm not certain how this is going to do with, uh, with actually filtering something in the air. As I said, I don't have access to the uh, full dispersed uh, riot gas, CS gas, that sort of stuff. I have to pepper spray, so I'm going to shoot some in here and uh, see how much I regret that decision. So I don't want to make too much of a mess with this. So I'm going to try and keep this relatively contained. I'm regretting this decision already. And, uh, oh boy. Oh boy. Here we go. Okay. So there's your spray actually in there. Oh boy. Okay. I can smell it and taste it. Not terribly pleasant, but uh, mostly just smells kind of funny. But yeah, this is doing the uh, this is doing the job. So yeah, you see the uh, the breathing is not great, but uh, I can feel 
a little bit of it in my uh, in my hairline outside of the mask uh, because my hairline's so far back from the mask it's not protected. But uh, yeah, this is uh, this is definitely doing the trick. Actually, a lot better than I thought it was. And, you know, I was uh, I was a little worried about that at first. Okay, I'd say uh, I'd say that one's that one's passed for actually uh, actually filtering out the agent and uh, uh, that one I expect to perform a lot more poorly. Um, like I say, this this is primarily just uh, you get blast in the face or in the general area. Um, it's not really going to do you a hell, 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 hell of a lot of good. This is the better than absolutely nothing scenario. But we'll give that one a shot too. Alright, just... <clears throat> what, burned? Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. Alright. Yeah, burned in my sinuses are a little runny from that. Mm. Okay. Not as bad as getting hit with it. But yeah. I wouldn't wanna I wouldn't wanna smell this stuff out of that again. Good boy. Okay. Do you wanna try this one, Seth? No. Safety. Oh boy. Okay. That actually still performed better than I. Alright, fix and get used to. But that did, uh, that did perform better than I expected. Yeah. This is tolerable. Not my favorite activity. But, uh, I could stand there. Um, yeah, I just wanted to clarify, uh, earlier when I was talking about, uh, uh, the size of hole that I was cutting. Um, you want to have more of it extending back here if you can. So, uh, this strap piece that we cut out, you want to cut smaller so it'll stretch further back. And that's going to tailor to the size of your face. Um, yep. This thing is awkward as hell. Not as awkward as mace though, so here's that. pepper spray one way or in each of these masks and see how that goes. Um, I'm feeling a lot better about this uh, on the whole. Honestly I did not expect them to uh, to handle getting directly sprayed that 
well, but uh, but they did pretty good. Um, a finely dispersed aerosol. This is not going to be amazing, but it's better than nothing. And uh, this one should perform fairly well. Um, but either way, both of them will be an enormous benefit if, uh, if you're talking about a, a spray directly to the face. And especially when we're not talking about something this small, we're talking about actual professional riot suppression dispersal. Um, yeah, this, this will do the trick. It's a sheet of plastic covering your face. Same with this. That'll, that'll keep the worst of it out, and uh, they will also help with the secondary dispersion. This better than, uh, than this. Uh, yeah. We'll get, uh, get together tomorrow morning and so can mace me. Pepper spray. I keep calling it mace. It's pepper spray. Cool. So, uh, I'm a little bitch, and uh, I don't want to uh, unnecessarily give myself the full nice experience. Um, as I said before, this stuff will soak into your pores. It, uh, it burns. It's an awful experience. Um, it gets on your clothes and will continue to spread and irritate. It's not just the immediate effects. There's a lot going on with this that lasts long term that uh, I'm going to try and minimize. So I have a uh, little swimmer's cap here that I'm going to be wearing under these, and uh, I'm going to have some trash bags draped over me. Also, I switched from contacts back to glasses. Uh, if you get any of these riot control substances in your eyes and you have contacts on, you need to remove and discard them immediately. Flush your eyes with whatever you can. Um, the CS substances, um, I've been told every time that I uh, went through training with it that it'll dissolve the contacts. I haven't looked into whether or not that's accurate, but uh, it's not something I want to risk anyway. I don't think the, uh, the pepper spray will have any direct effect on them, but contacts are porous, so they can absorb those. And uh, yeah, just a little bit of uh, safety precautions to make the test less miserable than it needs to be. Uh, I don't think so, it's just a bag. Okay. Well, I can, uh, I can feel a little bit. I see we didn't put, uh, didn't put as much filter material in here as I think is optimal, but, uh, yeah, this isn't bad. Cool. Oh. Right. Yeah, a little bit of, So there's a uh, little bit of burning sensation in my eyes. Not terrible. Respiration is perfectly fine. Um, you know, I'm pitched out. I'm wearing the uh, the garbage bag and the uh, uh, the swimmer's cap, so that's protecting my uh, my skin from the irritation. But uh, yeah, this is this is effective. More the uh, the carbon for the filter element, uh, more the loosely packed cotton balls, and this would do better, but this was just quick. Throw it all together. Alright, well let's uh, take a break and uh, I'll get ready for the one that is going to suck. buddy. Good. Again. Again.
again. Okay, so as expected, this mask is not as effective. Got a little bit of burning on my lips. Um, respiration is still doable. I can, uh, I can still breathe, I can still function. I'm not happy. When the mask collapses like that, a little bit of fresh air comes in, but my eyes are perfectly fine. And uh, I could get myself out of this environment if I needed to. I didn't drop straight to the ground. I'm not suffering any respiratory distress. Psychological factor is gonna be another big problem. Wearing masks always is. Being in those stressful situations always is. All right, I think we're good. All right, so I think we said this earlier, the uh, pepper spray that we found was the gel variant, so it didn't disperse into the air very much. It kind of hit the mask and just ran down. Um, masks are still effective. I think we would like to see what happens with one of the more aerosol versions where it spreads out into the air and get everywhere. Um, also, we would like to try uh, pepper balls. It's essentially a paintball full of a cayenne pepper substance used in mace and things like this. When they hit, they explode into a ball of the uh, uh, macy substance. And I think we'll also try those to see the effectiveness of these masks. But otherwise, it seems to uh, work quite well for what we had to do today. Yeah, that uh, that worked. I'd be willing to do that again. Um, the cheap budget version of the mask, uh, not as effective. Um, I did get some of the, uh, the secondary dispersal, like when it splashes, um, that helps aerosolize it. And uh, some of that definitely got through the uh, filter. Um, I can feel it tingling on my lips still. Um, burns a little bit. Uh, I was pretty concerned about the exposed portion of my face around the sides, but it didn't do anything to that, which I think lends to that there's not a significant dispersal. Um, also, it's still early in the morning. It's relatively cool. Um, all those effects are way worse if you've been sweating and your pores are open. Um, no significant respiratory issues associated with it. My eyes and my sinuses are fine. Just, just some burning around my lips. But, uh... I'd feel confident wearing either of those. Way, way better than nothing at all. Uh, the second one I expected to be somewhere on the order of just wearing a paper face mask, but honestly, I think it outperformed that significantly. Oh, what's going on, Seth? Well, apparently I got some of that on my finger and I just rubbed my damn eyes. So, holy hell. <laughs> <laughs> so the world's pretty fucked up right now and uh, there's peaceful protests that have turned into violent encounters with police officers uh, there's instances of the police instigating this there's instances uh, where it's heavily indicated and there's uh, there's evidence to support that white nationalist groups have infiltrated BLM movements and are making what should be peaceful Black Lives Matter protests become violent. And so anyone that's participating in these protests is at risk of having these riot control agents used against them. These are chemical weapons that are banned by international treaty from being used against enemy combatants. And we're using them against our own people. Uh, we hope with this video you uh, you can prepare yourself, you can make some kind of mask to help protect you. They're, they're cheap, they're easy, they're fairly effective. They're not military grade, but uh, they, will, they will help protect you from the worst of the effects. And uh, I hope none of you encounter a situation where you need this knowledge. But uh, 
sharing. It's the least we can do.